Hi everyone, um, just going to uh, wait for Dr. Rebecca Lewis and then we can kick off. So a few minutes. Hi everyone, I'll wave at a few of you while we wait for Rebecca. Um, but as I said, we're going to be talking to Dr. Rebecca Lewis today um, about all sorts of things to do with perimenopause, menopause, HRT um, and their new charity. So I'm just going to wait to let Rebecca in and we'll kick off in a couple of minutes. Just waiting for Rebecca. I'm waving at a few of you. Hello. Oh, there's Rebecca. Okay. Hi, Rebecca. Can you hear me? Hi. Hello, <laughs> Hello Katie. You? Very well, thanks. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We've got lots of lovely people watching. Oh, good. Lovely. Lovely to be here. Thanks for asking me. Pleasure. Now, um, before we chat, I'm just going to obviously introduce you to everyone. I'm sure most people know you, but for those of you who don't, uh, Rebecca is a GP with special interest in the menopause. Uh, Rebecca gives lectures and writes articles about the subject, and she's determined to improve the understanding of the menopause in current and future generations through education and access to accurate evidence-based medical information. And she's passionate about making the menopause a much more positive experience and enabling women to get back to feeling great about themselves again. Um, we yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in a nutshell, yes. In a nutshell. So thanks for joining us, Rebecca. Um, now, Rebecca and I met, well, we met a year ago today, actually, on World Menopause Day at Newson Health. Exactly um, that, yes. Exactly. I remember it well. Yeah, a whole year's gone by, my gosh. I actually can't believe it. Um, and Dr. Newson, who runs Newson Health, who is a colleague and partner with Rebecca, um, is one of our medical advisory uh, committee on the last lounge website and um, has been a, you know a huge sort of force for change in, in menopause yeah. hair yeah so look Rebecca tell us a little bit about first of all why you have this interest um, obviously in menopause and how you guys help women you know at Newson Health yeah. and, and obviously further afield <clears throat> well I mean really I got an interest in the menopause not much was talked to me at medical school about it at all it's fairly common for people my age um, but I really got interested when I went into general practice and saw how women came in their hordes with, with this low, flat mood, especially. Um, and, I, and then giving them HRT, how it can completely transform women's lives. Um, it was one of the most rewarding things in medicine. I've done lots of things in medicine. I used to be an anaesthetist, um, general practitioner, uh, did a quite a lot of neurology and general medicine as well in hospitals. And this has been the most rewarding um, uh, part of medicine for me. Um, some women are absolutely on their knees uh, when their hormones fail them and getting that right, getting the diagnosis right um, and helping them and treating them properly um, is, is, is incredibly rewarding. It's really interesting to me um, and it's an under-researched um, topic um, and so much work need, needed to be done. Um, and that's what really motivates me. And of course, Louise Newsom has been a leading force in the menopause world and really helping um, women understand a little bit more, society understand what the menopause means and opening up that conversation because it's been such a taboo. There's still a lot of work to do, but she's made great strides already. 
Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. You know, for me, um, so many people obviously know my story now. I keep banging on about it like you guys do. I don't think I'll ever stop until there's change. But, you yes. know, for, for me, you know, it was eight years ago now, um, you know, that I had all the symptoms, the low mood, the anxiety, the yeah. weight gain, the, you know, sort of not sleeping. Um, and for four years to have sort of, you know, every different doctor I saw sort of say it's depression, or yeah. or sent me off to heart specialists or to dementia yeah. specialists and you yeah. hear this time and time again time and oh day in <laughs> day out I'm so, it's it's it is yes. quite depressing i mean for one survey was done recently and 66 percent of women were offered antidepressants rather than hrt when they went to seek help i mean that's just so wrong it, so, so wrong. And when I, we see women who have been, as you say, often have a long story. Eight years, they've been referred to cardiologists. Cardiologists haven't mentioned their hormones. They've got palpitations. They've had investigations. Um, they've had treatments. They're on medications. We've had people on medications, uh, you know, significant medication for migraine clinics. Hormones not mentioned once. Causing awful side effects. People being diagnosed, misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia because their joints and muscles are so painful. Um, again, on heavy duty medications, having a lot of investigations which have side effects. Um, they are mislabeled and misdiagnosed. And this is a great tragedy because they don't get better because the root cause has not been addressed, the low estrogen levels. Um, and so their, their symptoms continue. And yet they're also taking drugs they probably don't need. So this is why it's so vital for the health of women to get the diagnosis right and early on and get on the right treatment and be informed about the treatment properly rather than being fed these myths that we've had fed to us by the media, um, um, from society, from generations that have um, closed our minds to things or have, um, have made us approach it from the wrong, wrong point of view completely. So it's great having things like this that you're doing, Katie. It's wonderful to hear people chatting, you know, people who've had an everyday experience, but um, it's, it's resulted in actually a tragic sense of loss of their lives to a certain extent because they've wasted their time um, and um, have gone down the wrong, wrong line in diagnosis. Not their fault. Um, but we need to get all the information out there and raise awareness. It's so vital. I mean, I, I obviously know what's gone wrong, but for those who aren't watching, can you explain in a nutshell what has gone wrong? Because it, it, it infuriates me so much. If, if there was any other medical, you know, thing like this going on, it would be a, basically a medical uh, legal negligence sort of case, yeah. you know. Well, so, it, so what's uh, gone it, wrong? <laughs> yeah, well, well, what happens in physiology is, um, you know, the menopause is when we run out of eggs. Um, in, in the ovaries and that's a natural normal phenomena it normally happens about the age of starts to happen in the mid 40s and the last period um, is about age 51 um, but of course it can happen much earlier one in a hundred women will be under 40 which is not that rare one in a hundred and one in a thousand under 30 so it's not just this stereotypical uh, 40 year old woman or 50 year old woman it's much younger women as well sometimes so we run out of our eggs in the ovaries and as a, as a result, we, the hormones we produce, oestrogen, progesterone and testosterone, also start to diminish um, um, over time. Um, and we become deficient in those hormones. So it's a hormone deficiency, much like um, hypothyroidism, low thyroid deficiency, or lacking insulin in, in, in people who have diabetes. Um, so we have this, we enter into a, a, a low oestrogen and uh, state um, and that causes a lot of symptoms because we have receptors, eastern receptors all over our body funnily enough. People just think it's to do with your breasts and your womb but it actually we've got receptors in the brain, in the muscles, in the vagina, in the heart, in the bowel, in the skin, in the nerves, you name it. Most um, parts of the body have eastern receptors. So when we lose oestrogen we get problems in the brain, um, off very common eating is a vital neurotransmitter in the um, amygdala and limbic system, which is to do with our mood, anxiety, concentration, memory, fatigue, and libido. So when we lose estrogen, we can get symptoms in those domains. Um, palpitations is also very common. Um, everyone knows about hot flushes and sweats, dry skin, dry eyes, 
nerve dysfunction, so pins and needles. Tinnitus is very common as well, but often not in the, in the textbooks. Um, vaginal dryness, that is such a common problem and not, ten, not talked about at all. It's a real taboo. For menopause is a taboo. Vaginal dryness is even worse. And that can be devastating for women. It's not just a little bit of dryness. It's such a wrong word to use, really. We, we, it's, it's, it's much more than dryness in many women. It's pain. Mm. So sitting down is painful. Some women describe it as sitting on a bonfire the whole time. It, is, it can be really very, very dreadful symptoms for women. Uh, urinary symptoms, recurrent urinary infections, um, incontinence. All these things that women live with and have normalized um because that's how we, we've been brought up i don't know what it is we need to change that it's not normal to have these symptoms we can take very safe effective treatment to get rid of them and to restore the hormones back to normal much as women would do with low thyroid for example um and it's i mean so absolutely important. but why so why when women go to their gps are there doctors you know and i know you know doctors work so hard and they can't be specialists in everything and they've only got 10 minutes but sure. but the way i see it is that when a woman turns 40 you know what would be wonderful is if there was some sort of symptom checklist that gets sent to every woman that they then at least take to their doctor and say look i've got all these symptoms yes. um you know and, and so that i mean you know, we, we haven't learned about this at school. So obviously it's now on the curriculum, thanks to some fantastic campaigning by Diane Dancer. Diane, yeah. The Make Menopause Matter campaign, which is amazing. So at least young girls will learn about it now. But why are GPs sort of not taught enough about it in their training? Well, going back when I was training at um, Guy's Medical School, I mean, there was not much about the menopause then, really. And, and, that, and that's not unusual. That was all... all all over the, the training um, medical schools you know it was mentioned for a day but I think actually there's several problems um, we have evolved medically um, we know now just more recently about what happens in the menopause women are living longer so traditionally we've had our uh, medicine has been based on more old-fashioned sort of um, historical uh, patterns of society so in the Victorian times the average age of death was 59 so uh, the menopause wasn't such a, a big thing for, for women then because they didn't have so much uh, time to spend in the menopause let's compare and contrast that to today where we are now potentially spending half our life in the menopause um, without our hormones the average age of death is now 83 and if you have an earlier menopause at 43 that's 40 years without hormones and we're seeing the effects now of living without hormones um, on the immediate effects um, and long-term effects on the individual the quality of life of living without hormones the low mood the anxiety uh, the muscle aches and pains the fatigue um, and many other symptoms plus the long-term health effects we now know um, affects the bones. Um, osteoporosis is much more common without hormones. Um, increases the risk of heart disease, diabetes, dementia, and type 2 diabetes. This is all because we're living without our hormones and shows how vital female hormones are to our function. So I think that's, that's because society has moved on and what we've seen new, new, new things come to research. And I think it's just been such a taboo, um, unfortunately, uh, women's medicine women's health has been put to one side and that's so wrong um and that needs to change and thank goodness we we are changing now but there's so much more work to do um and i think <clears throat> also if we can raise awareness in women uh, themselves and society so that you know what would be the ideal wouldn't it is if we could have as you say when perhaps you have a smear test at the age of 40 you have a, a questionnaire to fill in oh these could be the symptoms are you suffering this is what we have to do um, you, to, to help these symptoms and, and, and raise awareness like that and raise awareness in, for women. So a lot of ladies used to come to me and say how um, low and flat they felt and they felt that they were actually were depressed. But actually, the, if they were aware that actually their flushes and sweats and their, and their um, change in their periods all interlinked with their low mood, 
they would then also be able to sort of see the pattern and the doctor would also be able to see the pattern and they need educating as well not just gps yeah. but specialists as well the rheumatology departments the neurology the cardiology etc etc um and so they need education in fact um louise newton has set up a um uh, confidence in menopause course uh which is brilliant uh, sort of uh, one day very intensive course about learning about the menopause for all um, healthcare professionals. Uh, so that's an advancement. So we're trying to do something proactive. Um, and uh, Louise has just set up a charity as well. I was going to ask help. you about this. Yeah. So, yeah. Then, so tell us about this charity and, you know, obviously, you know, why you've set it up, what, what it's going to hopefully achieve and, uh, and obviously how women can support it more importantly. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it, well, well, do go and visit um, the landing page. It's the menopausecharity.org and set up by Louise. Um, and uh, there's a whole army of, of, of people working there uh, with great ambassadors and, uh, and a trustees as well, doing a lot of hard work there. It's really to help, number one, um, raise awareness, as we've just discussed, yeah. to help support women um, who are frustrated and can't get help, the correct help that they need. Um, younger women, often very um, left on their own and don't have support. So the ideal would be that we could have a helpline, develop that for support, resources, um, uh, Louise web, uh, has a website called Menopause Doctor, which is going to donate to the charity. Which is, when we get a website, we get enough money, if we can raise, please, um, to get a, a, a website going, then we can have the resources on there. So women, all women, any woman, can access fantastic evidence-based unbiased resources and get information because that's power isn't it information is key and um when you're informed you can make the right decisions and see and have the right conversations so it's, it's about that it's about education katie um again you know the doctors the um, women society employers one in five women leave their jobs employers need to understand that number one from being a selfish point of view if you're an employer you're going to lose cash because these women are leaving in their hordes and they're experienced skilled women and it costs an enormous amount to re-employ um someone who's who's left their job um let alone the impact on the woman financially as well as suffering from dreadful symptoms that have not been addressed the future health but uh, we've got to get that over it's not it's the here and now it's improving the symptoms it's getting people um up out of their houses socializing some women are housebound with their anxiety it is that bad um it is you know suicidal um uh, patients we've seen very very sadly it's the highest peak of suicide in this age group um going through the menopause it's a real health concern i mean if, for me personally uh, the, the, with our website we always we have three things we always aim to do with the facebook group and the website but it's first of all it's support so yeah. you know I'm, I'm really sorry that you're going through this then it's inform here's the information that you know we've got from medical professionals like you and, yeah. and then it is signposts so signposting to people at, you know like yourselves menopause specialists because i mean i i had three i get about five three to five emails a night and i'm not a doctor you know i'm just yeah. your average joe and yeah. these women like you've said are desperate their marriages are breaking up that some of them are suicidal they're yeah. leaving jobs their you know their relationship with their husbands and their children um and it, it's just diabolical that you know, eight years on nothing has changed so you know yeah. i really hope that this this charity is really going to sort of drive things it forward will. to make things better yeah yeah it really will <laughs> it's so desperately needed because as you say you know it's, it's, it's all good talking we need action yeah uh, it's out it's outrageous how women have suffered 80% will have symptoms and 25% will be so severe. Yeah. I mean, I've had women who, as you know, can't get out of the house. The anxiety is paralyzing. Marriages have split up. Um, that, you know, that the, the women obviously can't work. Um, they're absolute shadows of their former selves. They don't recognize themselves. We've had women who've had ECT. We've had women who've had, um, you know, really heavy duty uh, tranquilizers because they're, psychiatric symptoms have been deemed to be bipolar or um you know other severe depression and sometimes we do need both both medications when in severely affected women but 
we need to get the hormones right. That is the key. That's yeah. often the cause for all these symptoms and it's not being recognized. And also the, um, we've got, as you know, we're having an event on this Sunday, um, 8 p.m. in the UK with Dr. Avram Blooming. Uh, for those who don't know, Avram wrote the um, book, Estrogen Matters, and he's also an oncologist. And what's happened and why I wanted, I was sort of keen to talk to Avram is that, you know, so the fear mongering around the Women Health Initiative report, um, that there were links to breast cancer, which have now been disproven. So. You know, women were either who were on HRT were coming off it, yes. or, or then they were too scared to go on it. And, and doctors were also, you know, still to this day they still believe there's this link. Yes. Um, yes. And, and that's shocking. Yes. <laughs> and he's a hero. He's absolutely wonderful, Avram. I mean, his I heartily recommend his book Eastern Matters um, yeah. it, for for doctors and and anyone. It's just what a really good read. But yes, exactly. The opposite actually has been found from the WHI, this dreadful, um, uh, well, what, what it was, it was a scandal really in 2000. The um, report was leaked before it was peer reviewed, which is highly unorthodox, um, and leaked to the press and reported, you know, the next day, oh, HRT increases your risk of breast cancer, cardiovascular disease. Well, of course, people came off HRT in their droves. They've actually re-examined it properly. And in fact, the opposite has been found. Yeah. Women, women who've had a hysterectomy, who don't need progesterone, who have estrogen only uh, HRT and have been followed up for 18 years, it's been shown that they've actually got a, a slightly reduced risk of breast cancer. Um, and we'll also, yeah, that wasn't reported, was it, Casey? I no, it wasn't. And, and I'm that candidate. I, you know, I had to have a hysterectomy and I'm on estrogen. And, yes. you know, as a daughter of a breast cancer surgeon to encourage me to be on HRT. And also Avram's wife and daughter both have breast cancer, they both did. on HRT. And so, you know, these conversations and the charity and all the information out there and the women campaigning it's so important because you yeah. know we, we just want to get on with our lives i, I don't want to yeah. be determined by menopause i mean it's just no. like boring i want to get on with yeah. do something absolutely smooth. we, we well, don't want we, we're not victims we don't want people to be victims we want people's no. hormones to be replaced get on with life you know yeah. that's what women want to do I want, i'm enjoying my menopause because my hormones are balanced and that you know i'm enjoying life but i want everyone to have that same benefit and advantage it should yeah. be there for everybody absolutely um, absolutely yeah. so um in terms of the the way you're uh, funding the charity you there's a crowdfunding page set up is that right yes that's right on the landing page there's a link to a crowdfunding um uh, you, you could go and donate and, and in fact we're doing a webinar um, this week for to coincide with um, World Menopause Day and so you know if you donate something you can have some questions we can answer them as well so that might be Fantastic. interesting for people to watch or listen to absolutely I mean there's a couple of uh, questions here um, sure. obviously obviously Rebecca can't go into any sort of personal advice because everyone's medical history is different um, but um, one of the ladies says do you need to go on to HRT even if you have no symptoms sorry if that's a stupid question it's actually no really way that's question. a brilliant question i <laughs> yes. love it i love it um because we're asked asked that a lot number one i'm going to say um people think they haven't got symptoms but when i talk to them i can usually find some symptoms because we don't know because we normalize so much so i've had a lot of ladies saying yeah but i'm a bit low and flat because it's covid which is obviously very difficult and you know our lifestyles have been have been curtailed but actually it's it's not all that or it's not because of the elderly relatives or the or the teenage children which we often put things down to so often there's more symptoms than we think number one be aware of all the symptoms as well number two um as menopause questionnaire you could fill in there's about 32 symptoms you could have so if, if there are very minimal symptoms yes there still is benefit from going on hrt because of the long-term health benefits if taken within 10 years of your last period it will halve your risk of heart disease no mean feat it will decrease your risk of osteoporosis and treat osteoporosis it, the osteoporosis were it to be present but often women don't know because it's not painful um until you perhaps break something later on in life then it will obviously be painful very painful condition with multiple fractures but before then it's not painful it will decrease your risk of dementia as well and type 2 diabetes and it will decrease all causes of death if taken within 10 years of your last period including breast cancer deaths so a lot of positive things about long-term health benefits of HRT.
Um, and, and we and have to actually, say what type of HRT. There are lots of different types of HRT. Yeah. And so I, we always prescribe um, what we call regulated body identical HRT. It's a bit of a mouthful. But actually, if we break that down, body identical it just means the same chemical structure as the um, hormones we produce in our ovaries. So to me as a doctor, that, that's lovely. That's perfect. That's physiologically correct. We're replacing like with like. We've lost some hormones. We're going to replace them with exactly the same hormones. They're more effective. They penetrate the blood-brain barrier better. They attach onto the receptors. They, 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 they are much more efficient and much less side effects because they're natural. They're derived from the yam root vegetable. And they work with much less side effects and, and make women feel better. They restore function to all these estrogen deficient tissues in our body and uh, get women back to feeling their, themselves. I mean, it's funny. I always, when my friends ask me similar questions, I always say I didn't have hot flushes. I was still having yeah. periods. I, I describe it as a kind of terrible de description. When you've got a plant which is almost dying and you pour water on it just in time and suddenly it flourishes and it was like, for me, it was like, a, and I'm not saying this is for everyone, and obviously some people can't or don't want to go on it, but for me, it was literally sort of the brain fog, the, you know, it's sort of the, you know, my happiness, my yes. ability to lose weight, um, yes. you know, yes. brain function. Um, and I just think at the bare minimum, women should just be having these conversations with their doctors and, and making that can you know joint decision and, and someone has just said actually how bad do we have to feel before we ask for it oh no not at all the earlier you start it the better because of the long-term health benefits if if you can you know if, if we minimize the amount without estrogen the better for the heart the better for the bones and and, and long-term risks and it's an informed decision katie isn't it and that's what we want we want women to know and make their own choices um, but know the right thing, not 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 the myths and the tales from the media. Um, and then it's it's absolutely right. And just as you say, I've had so many patients day in day out say exactly the same. And in and as a doctor, I can see it. It literally is water, like watering a plant. I I can I don't, when I see them in three months, not always, but often them so much better. Um, yeah. And I see in their faces, they're they're back to them. Yeah, the sparks back because it's restoring. What, yeah what they they needed and uh and it's so 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 rewarding it's lovely mm. so i've got one more question because i know I'm, you're very busy and we need to let you go um and then we'll quickly sum up about the charity but someone um has put here if the patch suits should one still move to the body identical gel and could the gel bring back libido now talk to me really quickly because a lot of I, again i've i've learned about it but a lot of people don't know about testosterone and why that is yeah. needed by women you know so just yeah. So yeah yeah so testosterone is a really important female hormone we've got to get that out okay and um, the ovary produces more testosterone than estrogen so when the ovary fails you're going to lose testosterone and it's important um it's important okay everyone knows about libido it is important for libido but a million things affect libido as well but it is important for libido it's also important for mood actually concentration memory fatigue um, get up and go, your joie de vivre, that sort of thing, your motivation. Um, and it's really helpful to get back. So you, your word finding difficulties have gone. Um, your concentration is there. You can think sequentially. You don't have this awful brain fog. Really helpful. Um, it could be given as a cream. Uh, we do monitor levels, so it's kept very safely. So you don't turn into a man. It's not going to do anything like that. Um, and it's a very useful um, hormone to have. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not licensed for women. It is for men, not for women. Hopefully, that, that's going to change. It is recommended by NICE guidance for women. Um, as, however, but it's, at the moment, it's not licensed. But we're hoping to work on that as well to get that licensed because it should be. Okay, well, look, um, so for people who are watching, if you want some more information or support or signposting, um, if you want to contact us on www.lattelounge.co and then it's slash contact dash us slash <laughs> or just visit our website um, or the Newson Health website. Um, and obviously, please, if you can support this amazing charity, it would just make everyone's <laughs> so many women's lives so much better. And we can then just all get on and back to what we are doing. So, you know, Rebecca, obviously, thank, thank you, you so much again for today. And Absolute if pleasure. you and the, 
you know, if you and the team want to join in on Sunday, just let me know. And if anyone else is watching and wants to um, come to our Avram Blooming events, it, again, it's all on the website. But oh, um, lovely. Yes, thank you. But, but really, thank you, because you guys are doing an amazing job. And, and I couldn't do without you. <laughs> well, we couldn't do without you either. You're doing fantastic work. We're all working together, aren't we, Katie, really, on this. We've got the common aim improve yes. awareness get the right information um women support women i think we're good at that really us women yeah we are we're w women that what we call ourselves the menno warriors although it's not very sexy but it'll you know it's not... <laughs> oh, it'll right. do it's good all right all right nice well thank you so much bye and thanks for watching bye, take bye. care bye 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 bye, bye. bye.